my students in the last lecture i have discussed biot severs law and based on that i have discussed field due to a finite straight wire at the center of a circular wire carrying current and on the axis of a circular wire carrying current let us now focus on problems see the first one a conducting wire of length 4a is forming a square loop of side length a and carries a current i find the magnetic induction field strength at the center of the square let us see how to start So condition given that it is a square loop of side length A it is a square loop of side length A which carries now current so we want to calculate strength of the field at the center So current is I that is given. <clears throat> now see how to find the field at the center. So first of all, I'm focusing to one side of the conducting wire. What is the field at the center? See, we have discussed because of a finite wire, field at some distance d and that makes angles alpha and beta and current is a and we got the result that b equal to mu naught i by 4 pi d sine alpha minus sine minus beta. So why we have taken minus beta means alpha, it is a clockwise and beta is anti-clockwise. That's why one is a plus and one is minus. So now we are going to use this result in this problem. Let us see. So first of all, we have to focus on joining the ends of the wire to the point where we want to calculate strength of the field. So I'm showing the ends of this wire. So we want to calculate field strength because of that current carrying wire. So join the ends. So angle made by those lines with the normal. You can see here with the normal. So it is now 45 and this also 45. And you can see one is clockwise, other one is anti-clockwise. That means one is positive and one is negative. The same thing here we have taken alpha and beta. One is a positive and one is negative. So field that is equal to mu naught i by 4 pi d in the place of d. Distance of that point from this wire that is a by 2. That is a by 2 sine 45 minus sine minus 45. So minus of minus becomes a plus. It is 2 sine 45. Okay. And focus now direction part. So because of this current carrying wire at this location, field is now into the plane of the bone. See how we are getting that. In biot servers law, we have taken we have taken mu naught i by 4 pi it is mu naught by 4 pi into y into dl bar cross r bar. so with the help of dl bar cross r bar we can get direction okay so at this location field is now into the bore otherwise we can get direction <clears throat> so take your right hand keep the thumb along the current take your right hand Keep the thumb along this current. 
now curl fingers now fingers are curling into this bone right that means the field is now into the bone at this location or you can say right of this wire it is into the bone left of this wire it is out of the bone i am repeating <laughs> keep the thumb of your right hand along the current flow now curl fingers i am showing here this is the wire current is like this curl fingers okay so these are now concentric circuits okay so at this location field is now into the bone right of this wire left of this wire it is normal to both it is towards us means outwards this is inwards okay and you can see same field and same direction because of remaining three also that means all these four are adding that's why i am multiplying with a four okay now say calculation part so here what we can do is four and four gets cancelled two and here two comes four four mu not i upon pi a sine 45 it is one by root so it is now two root two mu not i upon pi a this is now strength of the magnetic field at the center of the square root okay let us see now next problem and next one also again same kind of question it is now length 3a forming an equilateral triangle of side length a so find the strength of the magnetic field induction at the center or you can say centroid okay so again use the same result so first make a triangle so current is now flowing in that and given side length you see current you can take either clockwise or anti-clockwise because we want to calculate now what is the modulus value at centroid okay let us focus now due to this part of the wire at this location what is it so first join the ends of the wire to that point the ends of the wire to that point and take normal from that point to this wire <clears throat> angle made by these lines with the knot this is 60 and this also 60 right and this distance is a d now d value see how much d equal to the value of altitude that is root 3 by 2 a and this will be this will be one third of that right so into one by th that is now equal to a by two root to three okay and let us now use that result what we got earlier b equal to mu naught upon four pi d and the c is i sine alpha minus sine minus beta again here you can see one is measured clockwise other is measured anti-clockwise so alpha one is a positive other one is negative negative of negative positive so mu naught i by 4 pi in the place of d it is a by 2 root 3 okay 
into sin 60 and this again sin 60. So 2 sin 60, sin 60 root 3 by 2. This is a field due to one bar due to remaining two or two same. And you can see because of this current strength of the field at that location. So keep the thumb of your right hand along the current flow, curl fingers. It is now into the boot. Okay. The same value by remaining two also. That's why I am writing here into three. Okay. Right now, see calculation part. Two and two, four, three. Sorry, root three, root three, three, three and three. It is nine. So nine by two, right? And remaining is now mu naught i by pi a. Right, 9 by 2, mu naught i by, that is pi a, right. Let us see next problem. Let's see what is given. <clears throat> A straight conductor of infinite length carrying current i1 is placed parallel to an infinitely long conductor carrying current i2. At a distance of find the force exerted by by one wire on the other wire. Okay, let us see how to start. So, given two wires which are in fact long, and these two are placed parallel. Separation between these two that is given as R. Let us take direction of current, both are same, or we can <coughs> analyze both cases. Directions are same, directions are opposite. So, first I am taking directions are same I1 and I2. So, infinitely long. So, we have learned that due to a long straight wire field is given by it. the first I am focusing field due to the first one at the location of second one and we are knowing that because of this wire at this location strength of the field our first focus direction part direction of field is now into the pole because we are keeping the thumb along the current flow of right hand, then curl fingers. So right of this wire, field will be into the board. Left of this wire, field will be outside the board plane, right? So let me take here, this board plane is XY plane. It is XY plane. Now for starting on this second wire, See how to calculate. Since it is now infinitely long, we are taking now a length L on this one. Okay. Taking length L. So force acting on that. So we are doing that F bar equal to I into L bar cross B bar. So we are focusing on force acting on the second wire. So it is now I into L bar, direction of L bar is direction of current. According to this direct convention, this is I2. It is along y axis. So, J cap. So, it is L, J cap. B bar. Field strength because of the first bar at the location of second bar is into the board. That is minus K cap. So, B into minus K cap. Then see what you will get. I2 L B direction part J cap cross minus K cap. That is minus I cap. Right. So for starting on second wire, direction part is minus K cap. That means 
This is attracting this one. So here we conclude that if current directions are same, then they attract each other. Okay. If current directions are opposite, they repel each other. Okay. Now see, it's a modulus value how much? F equal to B value. So we are knowing B value due to long current carrying bar u naught i by this i1 due to first one u naught i1 by 2 pi r right now substitute that in this form then see what we get u naught i1 i2 l mu naught i1 i2 l upon 2 pi r okay or you can say from here force per unit length that is mu naught i1 i2 upon 2 pi r okay so your conclusion means what we have to remember Directions means directions of currents are same attraction, right? Same direction currents then attraction attracts. If currents are opposite, then repulsion, <laughs> right? Let us see now next problem. <clears throat> Let's see the question given. Two infinite long thin insulated straight wires carrying currents I1 and I2 are placed along X and Y axis respectively. Find the locus of all points where the magnetic field is zero. Okay. So where net magnetic field is zero, that point is called null point. Given here, x i1 carrying current along its axis, i2 current along y axis. So we have to find locus of all points where magnetic field is zero. Let us see carefully. Just now we have discussed a force between two parallel wire sites. Even in that question also you can see where net field becomes zero. See carefully this is current I1 and this current is I2. You can see because of I1 right of this line direction of field is into the bow because of i1 because of i2 in the left of this line field will be outwards so what i am saying is take your right hand keep the thumb along the current flow curl fingers okay so i am repeating for this wire left of this wire field is now into the board because of this one left of this wire field is now <clears throat> it is inverse so directions are opposite therefore at one point net field becomes a zip and that is known as null point okay. suppose this distance is r1 and this distance is r then we can write b1 is equal to B2. It is a mu naught i by or i1 by it is a 2 pi r1 that is equal to mu naught i2 by 2 pi r2. So from this we can write i1 by r1 is equal to i2 by r. Okay. Suppose in the same problem directions are not same they are opposite directions are they are opposite 
then see what happens. Because of this one, right side field is into the bone. And because of this one, left side field is, you can say field is now inwards. Okay. Both are now inwards in this region. Okay. Suppose I'm taking now right of the right one in this region. So because of this, it is now into the bone. Because of this part, field is now outside. Means it is now outwards. That means because of these two bars, field can be zero only it is outside. Okay, because here directions are opposite. Or if you take left of the left bar, because of this one, field is outwards. Because of this one, field is outwards. <clears throat> but just keep the thumb off right hand along the current curl fingers. Okay. Outwards. And because of this one, at this location, field will be, it is into the bone. That means, in this case, null points will be outside the wires. Means, left of the left wire, right of the right one. <clears throat> It, it depends on strength of the fields. <clears throat> right? Now coming to in this problem. Coming to in this problem. Given two infinitely long words which are insulated and they kept a long X and a long Y. <clears throat> along X and along. Currents are, this is given as I1 and this is given as I2. So we have to find the locus of all points for which magnetic field is zero. So here what I am doing is <laughs> So here, right of this wire, direction of field, it is, you can see, into the board, <clears throat> right? Because of I2, right of the wire, field is into the board. Next, because of I1, I1 in this region, field will be, it is outwards. <clears throat> it is outwards. That means direction is now opposite. That means net field can be zero. Okay. So here I am taking one line. Let's see carefully. If you see third quadrant, because of I1, because of I1, current is now into the board. Because of I1, current is now into the board. Because of I2, current is now outwards. So in this region also, field directions are opposite. Okay. Means on this line, net field equal to zero. Right. So let me take one point on that wire. <clears throat> So I'm taking now one point on that line. So your field is zero. Its distance from Y-axis. This is equal to X, right? Its distance from X-axis. That is equal to Y. Means we have chosen a point whose position coordinates are X comma Y, right? Because of I1 at this location, field strength mu naught I1 upon 2 pi y, right? This is because of I1 and because of I2. It is mu naught I2 upon, it is a 2 pi x, right? 
now simplify this. <coughs> that means when these two are balanced, that the fill will be zero, right? No, not two pi gets cancelled. Remaining is now I1. I1 by Y is equal to I2 by X. Or I can say Y equal to Y equal to I1 by I2 into X. Cross check ones Y equal to I1 by I2 into X. This is the locus of all points for which strength of the field is zero. Okay. That means it is now straight line. If you are taking I1 equal to Y2, then Y equal to X. That means this angle becomes a 45. Right? That means they may ask question like, by giving the values of I1, I2, they can ask what is the angle, or you can say what is the slope, slope of that line. Right. 